Craft your finest strategy and outsmart your opponents. Shrine Guide. Welcome to the Guide of Winning. Spellweaver, come on, look at yourself. You want to win, right? I want to win. So yeah, we have something in common already. So today, bada bada bing, we're going to talk about how you win in Spellweaver. Because there's more than one way. There is more than one way. Uh, if we go to the achievements, it tells us right here. You want to be transcended? 40 life or more. Get it. You want to be a decay guy. Deplete your opponent's deck. Sweet. All right, all right. Now let's get into the multiple ways of winning. Uh, yeah, we'll go to collection. I've picked out a few cards here. Let's just start with the basic, easiest, normal way to win. Fireball, right? Three damage to a hero if you need it. Also does not to a creature. Versatile card. Uh, apparently the cost is going to go down tomorrow. Uh, sorry, no, on the 20th. So a week from today. And uh, yeah, two damage fireball. Beautiful. So this is the main way of winning in Spellweaver, right? Your opponent starts with 20 health. You start with 20 health. You're doing three damage when they have three or less health. So three damage. That's it. They lose. You win. Doesn't matter how much health you have as long as it's above zero. Main win condition is damage in this game. That's what it's all about. Creature combat. Beat in the face. Yeah. So uh, that's number one. Deal damage to zero from 20. Easy. So as we saw before, you can also win by transcending. By getting to 40 health. Yeah, so, card like this, Antriel. All your creatures, whenever they attack and do damage, they're gaining health. You're getting up to 40. You're at 39. You attack with a one attack creature. It hits. Boom, 40. I win. Get out of here. Uh, also, really great way to beat Amon on hardcore mode and on regular mode, I guess, too. But yeah, so that's win condition number two. Get from your original 20 health up to 40. Angels do it. Sack decks do it. I mean, my priest knight deck does it. There's there's a lot of ways to get there. The chalice. You remove that energy, you gain that life. Whew! I mean, I'm sure there's other ways and people are going to get creative. But, uh, yeah. Gain some life, get to 40, win. Game over. Doesn't matter how much life they have, don't matter how many creatures on the board they got. You win. Nice. Alright. Bring her to K, right? Let's look at Azurus. Heroic card. There's other cards that decay in the game, so you don't gotta just worry about having heroics. Um, yeah, so, you got a 60 card deck normally, right? Some people, you know, Thrashman, uh, Metal Zol, they love playing those 100 card decks. You can do that if you're worried about decay. Uh, I think there's a lot more to worry about in this game other than decay. Thank you, 3, for, uh, ruining the game for a while. You're my boy. Um, but anyway... So you start with a 60 card deck, you know, you're drawn, you're pulling things out of the out of the deck, and your card count goes down. If you have zero cards left in your deck slot on the left there, yeah, you lose. And you can force that on someone else by making them discard cards and decay cards, and you're basically putting their deck in the graveyard. And when they have no more options to draw anymore, they're done. Another day, another dollar, another win. Yeah, you just did it. Azurus definitely can do this. Vultures, Flash of Delirium. You're just throwing their cards right in the graveyard, and there's not a lot they can do about it. Good thing we have Steel Nor uh, Innkeeper there, though. It gets people drunk, put cards back in the graveyard. He's a good dude. But yeah, okay, so third win condition, right? So we have damage, life gain, decay. And then there's two more I want to talk about that are uh, based on uh, board state. So... Once again, we were hanging out with Antriel before. This one, you pay five mana, you got four levels, and you have three angels. You hit the button, this wonderful yellow aura fills the board. And, uh, yeah, you've just won by angels, which I've seen this done in tournaments. It embarrasses the hell out of your opponent, because they didn't remove one of your angels to turn prior. Or they have so much mana, or they've set up the uh, artifact creature to pop... Boom, hit it, 8 mana, 
win the game, beautiful. Uh, just as a precaution, don't hit this button early because it's an eight turn recharge. So uh, misclicks on this mean you're doomed, especially with the state the Angels is in right now. But uh, yeah, cool card. You can win by having creatures on the board. Oh, and there's one more way you can win by having creatures on the board. GR, baby. Grand Reunion. I mean, talk to Dunkle Dark about this. You know, hit him up on Skype. Dude's not playing right now, but... Ooh, that Darius deck. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so this one is a little bit more specific. The Angels one was easy. Also, this isn't a skill shrine. This is a blessing. It sits in the field. It can be removed. Yeah, so be careful with it. But basically, this is putting one of these things on the board at the end of your turn every turn. And on the start of your turn, you have one of each of these four. One fairy, one elf, one plant, one spirit. Bing. Beautiful. You have just won the game again. It's like the best family reunion ever. This happens not that often. But if you can pull it off, whew, beautiful. Okay, so those are the uh, four win conditions in the game. Damage, life gain, decay, and board state. Yeah, so that's about it. Quick video today, just, uh, you know, another Shrining basic guide for your life. So win more and lose less. Peace out. Keep Shrining, baby.